my name is Josh. I am an archaeologist and I'm also a sperm donor. The reason I became a sperm donor was because I know a few people who obviously have issues, as some people do, you know, uh, conceiving. I wanted to help people who can't have kids naturally, as it were, to have the joy of having a family. I'm a great believer in the fact that people, whatever whatever their situation, can, you know, make a family together. And I think there's a tyranny of biology in a way, and that people believe that, oh no, somehow that blood is, is thicker than water. It doesn't have to be genetic, it doesn't have to be, you know, Darwinistic in that regard, and that people can be a family even if they're not biologically related. As soon as I'd worked out that donation was something I'd like to do, I went online. The London Sperm Bank struck me as very professional. When I went in to meet them, to have a chat, they seemed really nice, really down to earth, very welcoming, yet professional at the same time. I was surprised at the length of the process, and sperm donation isn't just a one-off thing. I think people think, oh, you just go in, you know, uh, donate a few times, what have you, then that's it. But no, to actually have a viable amount of sperm, they do need quite a significant quantity. On my first visit, I went into the London Sperm Bank, and I had to fill in a medical questionnaire asked about my family and uh, any illnesses I've had in the past and, and my medical background. And I produced a sample in a general kind of all-round um, check. I'd never obviously had a test freezing before at all, so I was quite nervous. Finding out your sperm count, and the strength of your sperm, I did feel a bit nervous, thought, oh God, you know, I hope, I hope, um, you know, my swimmers are all right. That was a relief. Second visit, did some you know, blood tests and urine sample for hereditary diseases, which may not have been picked up before I started the actual donation process. This consisted of about 40 visits. The day-to-day -day donation process basically involved me uh, going to the clinic, getting given a vial, um, a little vial to produce into, and then I went to one of the rooms, the producing rooms I think they're called, and uh, uh, produced. So very, very simple. The kind of notion of you, do, you, you go into a room and uh, produce your sample is, is pretty much exactly, that's the core of it, and that's exactly, that's what, that's exactly what happened. Before I started donating, I did have a few concerns. My main one, I think, was to what extent any kids that resulted from my donations, to what extent I would be responsible for them. But the law in the UK says that any sperm donor who uses a accredited sperm bank has n no responsibilities for any of the children that result. So that was good, I was very reassured by that. So at one point, actually during the donation process, I had a concern about um, anonymity. And I began to wonder, well, you know, Actually, in 16, 18 years time or what have you, when all, all these kids are coming home to roost, as it were, you know, am I going to be in a completely different situation? Am I going to have a wife and a kids of my own? And, and is my said wife and kids, you know, are they going to be worried by it? And am I actually going to be, in a way, a different person in that, you know, 20 years time? I came round in the end because I just thought, well, ultimately what I'm doing is you know, it's it's not selfish. It's giving another person the opportunity to have a kid. I think I would be open with any you know future partners from the get-go. Basically, I think communication is really critical in that regard. When donor children reach the age of 18, they get given some information about you as a donor, and that in, that includes uh, what's called as a pen sketch. A few paragraphs you write at the time of being a donor, just describing yourself and your hobbies and likes and dislikes, anything really, as long as it doesn't reveal who you are. I talked a bit about my life. I kind of tried to give them a little bit of advice. Uh, which is kind of very hard to do when you're talking to people in the future who aren't necessarily born yet and you don't know which gender they are. So you can actually find out um, at any time uh, how many live births you've had. The last time I checked I have uh, two boys, um, which is rather exciting. It made me very happy, actually. It was uh, quite a moment discovering you're a parent. It was very, very moving. <laughs> I'm really looking forward to when I start meeting these offspring and kind of hearing about their upbringings and their, kind of their, their own family stories the happiness that it's brought them and their own stories, their own narratives. That's going to be, that's going to be really, really interesting to hear that and to hear about, you know, what's essentially going to be an increasing trend, really, of uh, these families who come together and, uh, you know, aren't bonded by biology, but they're bonded by love, ultimately.